Ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka. I can't stop this. Ooga chaka, ooga chaka. Deep inside of me. Ooga chaka, ooga chaka. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed the video because they clicked off halfway through my ooga chaka. Welcome, friends, foes, and everybody else out there. You're, you're one of the two. Welcome to our review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And Jack, bef before we even start, let me just say, you know, we've been talking about announcements lately, and that was fun. We've been talking about Star Wars, we've been talking about Disney remakes. But I look forward to just having a nice moment, like the good old days, where we can gush about a Marvel movie, and everyone can call us fanboys once again. I'm, I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, it'll... It, it's been a little bit. When was the last one? We did Doctor Strange. She-Hulk, probably? I, I, did we gush about She-Hulk, though? No. <laughs> Some of the night. I, I, I was gonna I was gonna say a specific episode of Book of Boba Fett is my most recent memory of it. <laughs> and then the following episode I, I was not a fan. But when we had the cowboy hats and we were all excited, that that was cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh ladies and gents, don't know if you've heard, but Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three just came out. Little known film by some actor who certainly isn't going to make anything big coming up soon. Uh, God, he's directing Superman. Can you fucking believe that? I'm so excited, man. I, I, we don't have a DC podcast, but there might have to be a DC podcast now. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Get in the comments if you want it. But, before we get started, speaking speaking of the comments, speaking of the YouTube video, and speaking of all those beautiful moments with me and Jack gushing, when, wouldn't you like it if there was an easier way to locate these things? Well, luckily, there is. I did it. <laughs> I finally made the... <laughs> Jack, you fucking vape. You knew I was going to do this, too. Yeah, That's go on, be going, be going. No, go I'm telling the people. I'm That's a you fake up, reaction. <laughs> That's what my YouTube channel is, Neil. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, we have playlists now. We have uh, the Plus Pals playlist, the Retro Plus Pals playlist for the older ones. Uh, we have gameplay pay playlists for video games. Last of Us is on there. They're not done yet, so there will be more in the future. So if something's not there and you're like, you played this, it, don't worry, it's coming. Uh... And also, if you are new to the channel and you just want to watch something we think is good, there is also a playlist called Narcissism, which I have made, which highlights some of my personal favorites that we've made. And the very first one on there is a little short video based on Falcon and the Winter Soldier, made by Jack here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> that's that's the first one I added to the playlist, and it's right there for you to see. That that should give you a nice demo of our senses of humor. But Let me double check through that playlist now. It's... You're you're in one or two videos in there. You you made the cut. <laughs> My brother did not make the cut, but you are here. <laughs> oh. Well, never say I'm I'm nepotistic or ne nepotism. What? What's the word? For? Never accuse you of nepotism. Okay, that's a better word. Speaking of nepotism, James Gunn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not a bad thing that he, he. I mean, I love Sean Gunn in this movie, <laughs> so like, it's not a bad thing. But that's nepotism. <laughs> yeah. I, everyone does it. Oh yeah. It. If I could make movies, everybody I give a shit about is in that movie. Like, for sure. You. If I get a Marvel movie. Jack will play a variant of Loki. <laughs> you, you could be like, uh, you could be Lego Loki. That'd be cool. <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm vaguely British. Why, why not? You, you, but you're a great actor, Jack. That's the thing. Mm, you put on the British. Yes, yes, yes. So, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy 3. 
the ending of Guardians of the Galaxy and the last James Gunn Marvel movie. So, Jack, I'm going to let you go first, because I feel like people are going to beat me up. <laughs> so okay. We're, we're going to start with positivity, <laughs> and then I, here's the thing. I don't even hate the movie, but I, I'm just being extra careful. You go first. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to take a long sip from my novelty Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 cup that I got from the cinema. Go ahead. I'll, I'll fiddle with my Thor Love and Thunder popcorn bucket while you do that. I can't drink this, so I'm just kind of fondling it. I loved this film. I thought this was fantastic. I remember seeing all the, the headlines. Best Marvel film since Endgame. Do you agree? I, I, I think I agree with that. Really? No Way Home was really good. But I think I agree with that. I, I was going to say. This, this is No Way Home might be wrestling for that spot, but... Compared to the rest of Phase 4, no, I, I I think so. I really like this. So, okay. Listen. I have come on here before, and I have said some things. I compared Captain Marvel to that feeling when you get breadsticks instead of pizza when you order pizza. I have compared Hawkeye to being my equivalent of Jesus. <laughs> so, obviously I have had some hot takes. I liked this movie a lot. May even say I loved it. I got some critiques. <laughs> I, uh, sure, I've, I've got a few gripes as well. I actually, I'm glad that you brought up No Way Home, because I, I actually view the two very similarly where No Way Home was this film with a lot of great stuff in it, but there were a couple writing hiccups here and there. That's kind of how I feel about Guardians of the Galaxy. The key difference for me, though, is whereas No Way Home had, first of all, I'm just going to say it, Willem Dafoe, Green Goblin, <laughs> Alfred Molina, Doc Ock, No Way Home has an advantage. Sure. But also, if, if we're just going by the quality, I think the main difference critically for me is No Way Home really felt like a new beginning. Like, it really felt like, hey, we're going to put some of the way that this Spider-Man has been to bed. We're going to honor that stuff, but we're going to put it to bed and set up a brand new Spider-Man. And then we were all excited for the future. We were excited about what we just saw, but also the future. Here... This is an ending to the Guardians of the Galaxy. So mm. I feel like because it's the last Guardians of the Galaxy movie with Gamora, Drax, and the whole team, I'm a bit more critical on it. And uh, I look forward to us discussing that further. Mm. Because, again, I didn't hate it, and I really look forward to gushing about this film because I have so many good things to say. But there is going to come a point in this video where... I gotta hate a little bit, and sure, my people, I come on, you're on the channel, you've been watching this long, have some fun with it, have some <laughs> fun with the hate. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's let's start off without any spoilers, just just getting it all out there real fast. Did you have any favorite characters? Did you have anything that really stood out to you without being super spoiler? Don't worry, we'll get to those spoilers. We're, we're going to talk oh, about yeah. that for forever. But for now, let's, let's keep it down. Okay. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his name. Mm -hmm. But the actor portraying the High Evolutionary in this, I thought, I thought that he was fantastic in the role. I'd seen him in Peacemaker. That's the only other thing I've seen him in. Mm -hmm. But in this, this, for, again, looking back at the rest of the phase the previous phase, phase four. Okay. We have a scary villain. I am afraid of this guy. Properly. He was great. Our heroes... This is a film with... Mm. I mean, the first in the first one, Peter is the main character. In the second, they sort of spread it among the rest of the cast, and here it's still spread among the rest of the cast. It's got, like... 
five to seven main characters this film. Mm-hmm. I mean, Rocket is the focus. But among the rest of the cast, it's spread pretty evenly. Everyone gets an arc. Everyone has development. Everyone has payoff from all the previous films in this. It, it all builds up to this one, and everyone has an ending. Oh, no. Jack has glitched in. I think as the world. end to James Gunn's Guardian, I won't say trilogy because of the holiday special, mm-hmm. um, Guardian's series, I am very happy with this. This... There were things I expected this movie to do that it did, and it did brilliantly. There were things I expected this movie to do, and it didn't, and it did something better. Mm. I really liked this film. I, to, to go off the high evolutionary thing, I, I believe the actor's name is Chuck Woody Awuchi. I believe, I might be pronouncing that incorrectly, but I believe that's how you pronounce it. Hello? Yep. <laughs> it glitched out for a second. Hopefully okay. we're all good. Hopefully it just keeps keep going. Keep going. Keep yep, going. Yep, we'll keep going with it. So, I I loved him as the villain. I thought he was really great. Uh, I, I don't have a ton of complaints there. I, I will say, the uh, without spoilers, I wish that the final battle with him would have been a little longer. Uh, that's, that's the only real critique I have about him, because dude is fucking scary. I, I'm right there yeah. with you. He's creepy, he's, like, obsessed, and he has this one scene where he's screaming, and I can't go into detail about it, but it's so fucked up. (laughs) Like, Mm. you get into his mindset a little bit, and without spoiling, God, I I don't know how much I want to get here. He has a success, and he's Mm. angry about it. And the way that the way that this actor displays that is at first really subtle where at first you're like oh he's happy because he's succeeding and then you're like oh he's pissed he's pissed that he's succeeding because he didn't want to do it in this way and it's such an interesting character to dive into uh other things i loved cosmo getting more screen time in this movie loved me cosmo every scene she's in and you know, I, here's one critique that I think people are going to bring up that I actually have no problem with. Um, Cosmo and Craglin screen time, little less than the rest of the Guardians, but I don't mind because it was really funny. <laughs> yeah. And Cosmo, the fucking space dog, one of the goofiest characters Marvel has, gets a really badass moment at one point. Yeah. It, it was really good. Um,. What are other things I can say without spoiling? Uh, I'll say the thing everyone's saying. Uh, Rocket's backstory is great, obviously. I have heard negative reviews that are like, fuck this movie. It's an insult to the Guardians. It's so bad. But that shit with Rocket (laughs) was great. Like, even people who are hating on this movie are complimenting Rocket's role in it. For good reason. Like... Obviously, there are little things here and there, like, one could say it's a little predictable, but I didn't mind at all, and I felt that the emotions involved in there really got to me. I did cry. Did you cry? Oh, of course. Okay, so we both cried. I I wonder yeah. if we cried at different scenes, though. I cried, I think, three times. I cried once. Okay, okay. My tears don't come... My tears are selective. They're like... <laughs> They're like the rich people of tears. Mm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Rocket stuff is really great. Um, I, I like what they did with Peter. So, we're gonna, non spoilery, we're gonna get into the hate just a little. Okay. I felt like with some of the Guardians, there was. How do, how do I minimize the damage I will receive for saying these things? Uh, you gotta say the truth, Neil. You gotta say the truth. I felt like some of the endings for the Guardians were not satisfying to me. Some of them were. But for me personally, and I will break down in spoilers much more why, mm. I didn't love where they ended Mantis. I 
did love where they ended Drax, but I wanted more of it. And keep keep keeping it spoiler free. This this is the part where people are gonna get pissed at me. I think either Gamora or Adam Warlock shouldn't have been in this movie. I think one of them should have been in it, and one of them shouldn't have been. I will explain in more detail why later, after all the gushing and all of the love for this film that we have, but that's just how I feel. Hey, I'm still alive. I succeeded. <laughs> that's because the video's not uploaded yet. <laughs> no, I... I... I disagree, mm -hmm. but I can I can absolutely see where you're coming from with that thought. Well, the good thing is, like, when we get to spoilers, like, to all you people who don't want spoilers, sorry, you're getting half the review here, but <laughs> uh, when, when we go into spoilers, we can, like, talk about it, and we can debate a little, and we can, we can see where the difference of opinion goes. Plus, yeah. I, I have noticed in our discussions before... Sometimes I interpret a scene different, differently than you do. And when you give me your take, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, that's actually good from that point of view. Yep. Same the other way around. Again, art is subjective. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Maybe by the end of this, I'll say I was a liar and maybe I was wrong. But for <laughs> now, <laughs> I was about to say jokingly, fuck this movie. But why would you? It's a good movie. <laughs> Uh, do you have mm -hmm. anything else to say before we go into spoilers? Cause I think I for <laughs> the spoilers, just for those watching who want to know our scores, I think scores first mm -hmm. before going into spoilers, and then scores may change as we discuss it by the end. I, I think my score is a pretty good indication of how much I like this movie, because despite my critiques, I'm giving it an 8.5. I, I, I'm not giving it a 10 out of 10. I think mm -hmm. it's just below a 9. Like, I think it's, like, right there. If we gave 8.9s, I think I would give that for this, but we don't do that. We only go halfsies. So it gets an 8.5. Cool. I was debating this, but no, I, I'm... Mm -hmm. Am I sure? It, it, listen to your heart. I, I, I think I'm sure. I'm, I'm giving this a 9.5. I, I think that's fair. I, I, I have... It. I have a few gripes with this film, but I feel like had it been 15 minutes longer, mm -hmm. that would have been enough runtime to address my very few flaws with this. And, and for the record, I do think this movie is better than Ant-Man. I think it's better than Thor, Love and Thunder. Yeah. Wakanda by, by Forever. Yeah. Single-handedly has restored my faith in... The MCU. It, it was dwindling a bit there. Well, I don't mean to insult that newborn faith, but did you hear there might be a whole song and dance sequence in the Marvels? <laughs> I did not, but as someone who likes Kamala Khan, and is alright with Monica, and Carol was fun in Endgame, mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah, that, that's kind of how I feel about it, too. I... I'm not a fan of the Captain Marvel part of the Marvels, but I love me some Monica, and I love me Kamala, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm going in optimistic to that one, but we're not here to talk about space stuff. Wait, we are actually. But different space stuff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have four seconds to get the fuck out. Four. Five. Six. Twelve. One. They all die. <laughs> None of them die. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! That might be the what biggest the surprise. Like, you know, here, here's another thing that I think could be a critique, but I, I'm kind of going to phrase as a compliment. I, I feel like I went in expecting them to die, like a good yeah. chunk of them, but the yeah. fact that none of them die is more surprising because of that. Absolutely. That. I've been talking to my co-workers before seeing the film of, oh, okay, so what? Drax and Rocket are definitely going to die in this. And I was like, ah, I, I could see them maybe killing Peter, you know? And people were thinking Nebula, Nebula was a safe call. None of them. They all survived this. 
I mean, there there were one or two moments where I got scared specifically for my girl Nebula, but mm. I I was surprised. I really yeah. thought I I really thought Drax wasn't making it. Mm. He was the big every, one. Every fight there were quite a few scenes where it's like Drax was taking the lead in a lot of action moments. I'm like, he he's at the front of the party. This could go badly. This could go badly. He gets like shot twice and they're helping him. I'm like. Are, are, are we? Are we? Yeah, yeah. I was. There were stakes in this. There, unlike Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness. Unlike, unlike Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania up until the last scene. I'm. I'm like, yeah. I, in those films, I didn't think in any moment. Oh, oh Doctor Strange might die here. Mm. Oh. I, Ant-Man might be in trouble. I did not in the fight with Kang at the end, but that's a whole other thing, because, yeah. Here, most action beats, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on the edge of my seat here. Mm. So at the end, I'm going into details now that we're doing spoilers, again, Drax is a few moments, Rocket, when he's on the table in the Milano, oh, yeah. and it's that, that shot from the trailer, Peter screaming, I'm like, this is it, this is it, fuck, fuck, fuck. There... There was and one, he doesn't. There was one then, moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was one moment where I got scared for Mantis because, like, mm. and look, I I don't want to shit on the Marvel movies too much. I do love them. E even in the worst Marvel movie, I think there's some good stuff. However, with all of the jokes in Thor Love and Thunder and how they undercut very serious moments sometimes when Mantis reached to, like, tame the big monster, like, use her powers on the, the obelisk, I think the creature was called, or something. Abolith, yeah. Something like that. Uh, I, she's about to use her powers on it, and I was like, God, it would be hilarious oh. if it just eats her. <laughs> yep. And I, yep. in my head, I was like, would they do it? Would they kill off such a cool character just for a joke? And I was so scared that entire time. Yeah. But they didn't. She made it, and she tamed him. <laughs> yeah, I was because in that moment as well, I'm like, what? One of Peter's only remaining members of family. This, this, mm -hmm. this could be an emotional thing for him if Mantis is the one who dies. Oh my god, I didn't think of this. Which then would have, you know, him then going back to the grandpa and the, at the end of the film, I mean, yeah, that would have been interesting, or for the Star Wars of the MCU, or maybe she just, just loses a hand to it or something. But that, no, that the, there are all fun. these moments where you feel that these characters are genuinely in danger. Which I haven't had since Endgame, maybe? I I feel like the moment... God, the Infinity War is such a good movie. I, I feel like the moment where I was like, oh shit is, like, it, it started a little with Heimdall when he dies, and I was like, okay, so they're killing off characters. But then when he walks over to Loki, and we have that moment of, oh no, oh no, is he gonna? And then he just brutally murders Loki. That's when I was like, okay, anybody can go at any moment, and then that happened in Endgame, where so, like, in Endgame and Infinity War, where people were mm -hmm. dying left and right. Mm. I, I was definitely feeling the same way here. And to be fair, even though, like, I was satisfied with them all living, mm. I do get the criticism where some people were like, oh, well, some of them should have died. And I, I kind of get that. But I feel like, for the most part, the endings we got, or e even with some of them that I don't fully agree with, the ideas behind some of the endings almost feel more satisfying than a death. Yep. Yeah. Like, it, it, no, I, I look at it and I'm like, mm -hmm. I, again with Drax, it's like, would the film have been better had Drax died? I don't think so. Would the film have been better if Mantis died? I don't think so. Would it have been better had any of these, any one of them died, any group of them? I, I don't think so. Well, the one I'll make an argument for is Star-Lord. Because sure. what if they, they get his body back and he's holding mm -hmm. the Zune... And it's just on one of the songs Rocket likes most, and he goes, he had it set to my favorite song. And then we realize, kind of, without saying it, oh, he didn't go back to get it for himself, he went back to get it for Rocket. 
Aww. And then he's gone, and then he's like, I'll lead the Guardians. I think that's the only one where I'm like, there's there's something there. But... Sure. Sure. Still, like, I, I still like the fact that Star-Lord currently is the only character we know for sure is coming back. Yeah. And to me, like, obviously it said the legendary Star-Lord, so that kind of sounds like a Disney Plus title. But... I think that means he's going to be in Secret Wars, which, mm. honestly, seeing him hang out with the Avengers again, like, seeing Peter Quill hang out with the Avengers, I really look forward to that, because I loved his interactions with Iron Man. I want to see how he would interact with some of these newer characters, like, um, just just to give an example, I mean, we, we have this new version of Vision, we have Shang-Chi mm. in the universe... Mm -hmm. Shang-Chi is very, like, skilled and disciplined, so that would be really funny to see him interact yeah. with. <laughs> It'd be cool to see him interact with Spider-Man, I think. Oh, yeah. Give the whole memory wipe thing. He, I mean, Star-Lord held a gun to his head once, so, like, yeah. it'd be it's funny if they'll Peter remember that like adventure. <laughs> Just not that it's Peter. I, I definitely want to see him, like, dude bro out with Wong, because at this point... <laughs> Any character teaming up with Wong is hilarious to me. Yes, yes. We need the Rocket Raccoon and Wong dynamic. Make it happen, Marvel. <laughs> Give them their own Disney Plus series. And throw in that one girl from She-Hulk. She was awesome. <laughs> Madison. Madison, yes. Madison. Best MCU character. One of them. She's up, she's up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me think. You want on what to the next talk fucking point should Adam? be. Yes, so Adam Warlock and Aisha, they are basically my only gripe with this film, mm -hmm. is how they were handled. Aisha, no complaints with. That, 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 was, that was all right. That was fine. Don't really have any complaints with her, her interactions with the High Evolutionary, her death. Fine. Thumbs up for that. Mm. Adam Warlock is a character I am vaguely familiar with from comics and TV shows and video games. Mm. To me, it's always been, oh, he, the Avengers have Vision, like the Guardians have Adam Warlock. He's he's their equivalent, which the MCU kind of played with, with the Vision oh, yeah. being the one that's thrown in his head instead. Yeah, yeah. Very fitting comparison. Yeah. Um... Yeah, he's, he's space Jesus. So, I know that this is a departure from his portrayal in the comics. Mm -hmm. But it's not a character I cared for in the comics, so I don't care. I don't mind. I quite enjoyed Will Poulter as Adam Warlock. I liked his design, the sort of, the, like, burned, singed sort of center to the chest, with a wee skull in the middle of it. It was an interesting look. I liked it, the red and gold. Uh, the gold. Mm -hmm. No, I I thought it was funny. I thought it was scary, strong in some scenes. Uh, the comedy with him works, I think. My issue with him mm -hmm. is, and I think this ties into your thing of either he or Gamora should have been dropped from this film, mm -hmm. is he didn't have a ton of screen time to build much of a character. He's just sort of... He's, he's that character archetype of child in grown man's body with a lot of power. Which is fine. The Guardians don't have that character trope yet. And now they do. It's It works fine. But from the tee-up at the end of um, Guardians 2, it's like, oh, okay, here we go. Adam Warlock, oh my god. He's going to be the next big man. That, he was... I think that's one of the first, or one of the earlier Marvel end credit scenes. There's like, ah, oh, and I shall name him Adam. Where I go, oh, Adam Warlock. I am. I know what that is a reference to. I understood that reference. Yeah, the Captain America. Yeah, yeah. I, I had the Captain America moment. So well, not a character I'm overly attached to. Wish I had more screen time so I could be more invested in him. But ticked all the boxes he needed to, I think. Wanted more, but it ticked the boxes. Well, Jack, let me tell you, has the big bad hater of this film who really likes comic books, mm. I actually fully agree with you on this one. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I, I was a little surprised too. Uh, so here's the thing. I have mentioned in the past that I used to hate the Guardians before the movies started coming out just because they would invade cartoons and take over for a few episodes. I remember that. Adam was in one of those cartoons, and that was my only exposure to Adam Warlock before this. Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Yep. Yep. So, I remember them crashing through the roof of the mansion, I think. So, here's the thing. I know of Adam Warlock. I know his role. Obviously, he paid a, played a huge role in the actual Infinity War in the comics. Mm. Like, he, he wears the gauntlet at some points in that. Like, Adam was huge in that story story point, but obviously they still told a very good story with the Infinity War we got, so he wasn't really missed there. When they said that Adam was coming, I didn't really care. <laughs> like, I, I didn't care at all about this character, so if you want somebody who's going to be upset about how it's different from the comics, I'm not that guy, I'm sorry. But, for what we got, I actually really ended up liking him. Specifically hey. because of how innocent he was. Mm. Like, there were moments where... I remember that one moment where he kills that dude and he goes, I didn't like doing that much at all, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see that he's actually just this innocent guy who doesn't want to hurt people, but he's in a position where everyone's making him hurt people. I feel yeah. like if he... Mom's telling him to do these things, so we'll do what Mom says. I, I honestly feel like if he would have had more screen time, he would have been one of the highlights coming out of this movie. I, I really hope he gets his own project. I really hope they don't throw him away, because Will Poulter is one of my favorite <coughs> actors working right now. Like, when mm -hmm. they announced him, that's, that's when I started to be like, oh, shit, Adam Warlock, I can start getting excited. And in this yeah. movie... I liked how broken he was. Like, I like that they do everything possible to kill this fucker, and the closest they get is they rip his shirt off. <laughs> well, okay, Nebula stabbed him at one point, and that seemed to do a lot of damage, but not yeah. enough where he couldn't fly back home through space. <laughs> I really liked Adam in this, and I liked Aisha Fine. But yeah, that is my problem. He doesn't have a ton of screen time. And mm. I really would have loved to get him in this more. And it, like, obviously now that I've seen the film, I can pitch alternate versions. Of course. Which I'm going to do. Uh, I, I think that... Here's the thing. I'm going to bring up one of my other gripes. Because I feel like these two characters interacting together could fix it. First of all, this is theoretically in a version where Gamora's not in it. I'll get, okay. We'll talk about that a bit more later when we talk about Gamora specifically. But one of my problems with this movie is I feel like they made Drax too dumb. And for some of it, it made me laugh, and I was okay with it. And maybe that's a problem with the MCU as a whole. Like, maybe, it, maybe that was happening in Infinity War, and maybe that was happening in Endgame 2. But here, where the other characters are just straight up being like, you're stupid, and stuff like that, it, it affected me more in this one. To the point where when they start to do the transition where it's like, oh, Drax, Drax is an idiot, but he's a really good dad. It didn't really hit for me because I'm like, yeah, but he's stupid and he's putting people in danger and completely abandoned Rocket. Those aren't good dad traits. But it, it, here's how I would fix that. Theoretically, with Adam, what if, what if Drax didn't leave the the ship? Gamora's not there. Instead, Drax is the one fighting that Bebop-looking hog thing. And oh sure. Ultra hog. Is that what it's uh, called? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a Marvel character as well, because they had War names. War pig. Okay, I see. So, it, it, I would have had it been Drax fighting War Pig. And then, instead of Adam just being contained for a little bit, I, I would have had Drax, like, walk up to him and be angry at first. But then maybe Adam says something or reacts in a way where Drax realizes this is just a kid. 
and we can see some of that parenting come out through Adam and Drax. Now, obviously, like, this is after the films come out, so, like, seeing things like that, like, you know, it's very easy to be like, oh, I would do it this way, the grand arbiter of, of stories, but, like... How, how it should have ended, you know. Mm. But, like, I, I feel like there were plenty of ways you could have kept Adam more involved with the main story we have here. Like, for example, what if the Guardians trick Adam, like, after Adam hurts uh, Rocket the Guardians have to get to this place to get the data. What if they trick Adam and they're like, hey, listen, you want to take him back to your boss? He's dying. Help us get this thing. And then maybe you could have had, like, this hostile situation where we don't know, is Adam going to betray the Guardians at one point? Is he coming around to them? Maybe we could have had him on the weird fleshy planet. Yeah, had him be on, on that mission. Yeah. I, I'm just saying, like, I, I just really like what Will Poulter was doing here. Like, I really like when he's about to kill Gamora, Gamora holds up... What's the creature's name? Blurt? Blurt. <laughs> so she holds up Blurt, and he just stops and goes, let's not be hasty. <laughs> <laughs> he was really good yeah. and had great comedic timing in this. So, yeah. like... I don't know. I just really wish he would have been in it more. That's that's why I'm pitching these alternate takes. Mm. I think, um, as we've talked about it, mm. and again, it will time. I think we'll talk about this next. The him or Gamora choice, perhaps. Mm. I think a part of the reason why we didn't get more screen time, just in general, with Adam is because at the end of Guardians 2, James Gunn did not know they were going to kill Gamora in Infinity War. Mm. So he had to compensate for that in this film. Adam being... I'm curious. I don't. I think if he knew that, Adam might not have been set up in that post credit scene. I... I wonder. Because... I think, and I, I'm sure some people will disagree with me on this, but I think if Gamora just would have just walked off and we didn't see her again, that would have been an okay ending for me. Like, with, with what she did in Endgame, I mean. Maybe she comes back in her own thing. Like, maybe they could give her a Disney Plus show where she strengthens this bond with the Ravengers because I want to be clear even though I'm saying one of these two has to go both their stuff was good like I yeah. liked Gamora in this movie still uh, I, I'm not saying just throw her out I'm saying I feel like since she did die in Endgame there's more of an out there for Gamora like if we were to say ah, oh, she shouldn't be in this movie and maybe she gets her own thing and Adam can take center stage maybe I would have gone down that path but, like, I, I did like Gamora in this movie, and I look forward to us mm. discussing more of her role. Yeah, I think, again, that's definitely something they could have done. Mm. I think had you done that, then, okay, this is the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy story. Read the appendixes. Go watch the Gamora <laughs> show. Yeah. I, I mean, fair. I, I, think, I think it was better to have... I think how they did it, I prefer over the alternative of not having had Adam in it at all or not having had Gamora in it at all or having, as I say, appendixes. Because, again, as we're saying, both of their stories, both of their things were good. We just wanted more of those specific things and perhaps chopping and changing or swapping them would have allowed for that. I will disagree, though, on the Gamora's ending being an endgame. Because then what her ending is, ah, oh, Gamora's back! Kind of it's an alternate slash variant slash past version of Gamora who kicks the Guardians in the balls and walks off. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of love that. <laughs> the last thing she did with the Guardians was kick Star Lord in the balls and then it, she ran funny. off into the sunset. <laughs> it's making you laugh. You kind of love it. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I do. I think, it, I think it's funny. It's funny, in that scene, it's, it, it's funny, like, again, how it should have ended, or, like, a comedic context. But I, I, I think I'd be kind of disappointed by that, I think. 
Um, and then if that was it, we never saw that character again. Yeah, you're right. I mean, now I do want to do a review one day where, like, I show the scene where she kicks him in the dick, and then I just cut to, like, a still frame, and it says, and Gamora was never seen again. <laughs> okay. But do you want to... <laughs> Here's my thing, though. I have to go. My planet needs me. <laughs> Gamora died on her way back to her home planet. What is her home planet? Oh, wait. Yeah. Let's not talk about her home planet, actually. Mm -hmm. Balance After them didn't come back in the that's... But uh, would you like to hear my pitch for the um, Adam shouldn't have been in this movie, Gamora should have side? Yeah, yeah, let's hear that version. I'm fair here. I don't debate it, but no, I, let's hear it. I think Gamora should have been the one to save Peter at the end. Because think about that. He's in space, he's freezing to death, Gamora comes out and saves him. That's a perfect parallel to what happened to her in the first movie when Peter had to go out into space and save her. And I, I think... It would also speak to her character's arc a little bit. Like, maybe there could be some dialogue after the save where she makes this more clear. But she starts this movie not giving a shit about any of the Guardians. Not caring what happens to them. I mean, Nebula, kinda. That's another thing I didn't love, the grunting that they do between each other. I thought it was funny, but I was like, okay, you guys are really gonna have, like, not a ton of dialogue together. It's mostly grunts. <laughs> But I, I think that the, the message of, no, they didn't get back together. They're not going to fix that relationship. But by the end of this story, Gamora did care for Peter enough to go out there and save him. I think that's a cool parallel to the first movie, and I think that's really good. I think it's funny that they literally cre recreated the painting with Adam Warlock and Star-Lord. I think that's really funny. But to me, if... And I don't know how she would have done this, but I'm also a little upset that Star-Lord's mask wasn't in the movie at all. If she would have gone up and put the mask on him and then them both get pulled back in, I would have loved that. That, that probably would have been another, like oh shit that's so cool like it would have been so poetic for those two characters and I, I think there could have been more scenes of Gamora talking to the Guardians and getting to know them a little like we get a little of that here and there but it really feels like she's an adversary to all of them except <clears throat> for the end like she begins to care about Rocket a little mostly because he's just hurting but I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like if one of them would have been in the film and the other one wouldn't have been, maybe they could have devoted the time we've spent on putting them both in to making one of them really shine, is kind of what I'm getting at. No, I, I agree with that sentiment, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can pick apart and argue specifics of, ah, oh, I, I really liked the, the, the grunt of acknowledgement between the two of them as they arrive and then as they leave. That, that feels very siblings to me. I, I just don't love that that's the last thing we're going to see them say to each other. Because, confirmed, uh, the actress who played Gamora said she is not coming back. Yeah. So, like, the last conversation in this big arc between Nebula and Gamora, the last thing they ever did was go, ugh, and then walk away from each other. That, that bugs me a little. But that's yeah. a nitpick in comparison. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I agree in principle. Mm. But then I also think, ah, equally, the film could have just been ah, ten minutes longer. I mean, and then you'd have, that, I think you'd have that amount of time, I think. Um, I don't think I'm a massive fan of... I get what you're going for with Gamora going out to say them. Mm. Um, I think if this was our same Gamora from the previous films, I think she probably would have done that. Mm. I think it being this version of Gamora who has spent way less time with these people. Mm. I, I, I don't, I think it would have, again, been a cool parallel, but I don't think it would necessarily have felt as mm. 
earned if she did it in this one? Well, maybe she, it, it, the the reason I say it is because I don't think they love each other, but it's no. kind of clear. Like Gamora sees it, and there's a ton of scenes where it's clear that she realizes this. She is aware that the Guardians, Nebula, Drax, Mantis, Rocket, all of them, Groot, they love each other and they're family. Mm. So mm. I think if she would have saved him, it wouldn't have even been just for Quill. It would have mostly been to be like, I wanted your family to stay together. That's why I went out there and did that. Maybe there could have been some dialogue with Nebula about that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think had it been Nebula there, I think, oh, she, she might have gone through and saved Nebula there. Mm. Um, but no, I, I liked the recreating the God and Adam painting. That was funny. I got, that got a laugh from our theater. Um, but on moments in terms of characters dying, when Peter's in space there, I'm like, oh, and then no, he gets that push, it's like, oh, okay. And, and, then, and then he sort of stops, he hits that bit of rubble, and everyone, the characters are like, what the fuck? And the audience is like, what the fuck? I'm like, okay, cool, we, we can still save him. And then when he starts getting like bloated, I'm like, oh my god, are they killing Star-Lord? Is he the one who dies in this film? So, Oh my god! My, my brother whispered in my ear during that scene, they are going to play a slow version of Hooked on a Feeling while Star-Lord dies in space. And everyone is screaming and crying while you hear Hooked on a Feeling in the background. So, sort of like, I guess what he was probably going for was like in Deadpool where they play the really slow version of Take on Me. Yeah. Honestly, that'd be a perfect way to kill off a character like Star-Lord. But when he lived, like, to be mm. fair, there were people in my audience that went, oh, yes, yes, like yeah. when when Adam saved him. So at least yeah. Adam did get that cool moment. Mm. No, and as then that felt triumphant still. It's like, ah, oh, again, no one, no one needed to die in this film, which asks one of the thousands of people who go into this film expecting multiple characters to die mm -hmm. that feels really good i thought cracklin was gonna die too i i literally thought james gum was be, gonna be like well if i'm leaving i'm taking my brother with me yeah, he, weasel's coming back in creature commandos that's enough i like that cracklin's still out there though just because he still has the yak arrow and stuff like oh and yondu yondu <laughs> Yondu's very brief cameo that God almost got a second cry out of me. <laughs> yeah. I, I it took after seeing the film, I it took me a moment, I'm like I do I need to watch it again? Is that just reused footage? Is it reused audio? And then I remembered, no, Michael Rooker got into costume and makeup to go to the set for Thor Ragnarok to film a blooper so that there'd be set leaks that he survived and appears in Ragnarok. No, he's absolutely up for getting in that costume and makeup again. Use your heart, boy. God, it was just... That character, man. I I don't know what it is where that character has gotten us so much by the heart. It's gotta be down to the whole, like... He was so funny. And he was so caring right at the end where he's like, I'm sorry I didn't do it well but I'm so glad you're my boy. While he's freezing in space. Yeah. His death is just so good and so powerful to the point where when Kraglin is at his lowest, we get to see Yondu probably one last time. You know, obviously, it, multiverse, so maybe we could get lucky and find another Yondu. But if this is the last time we see Michael Rooker in the MCU... I think it was a good moment because that really did feel like passing the torch. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have other things to say? Uh on um, let's see. Yeah, Kraglin and Cosmo. There you go. I would have liked them to have come with a team and been on the mission the entire time just to get more of them. But what we got, I really liked the call, calling her a bad dog right at the start on her the entire rest of the film Take wanting to be called a good dog. Take it back. Uh, with the Howard the Duck cameo and the that one guy from the first film who did all the jewels and stuff with Yondu who sent him out to get the orb. Bring it back, those wee cameos was fun. Um, 
but no, Craglin's arc again using the using the heart and Cosmo getting a big moment of using their power was great. Oh yeah, um, I I, I want to see I Cosmo liked, come back. Yeah, I liked having them again. I, I wanted more, but then for the payoff of nowhere, but it's, it's the wee hex, hexagon gates, mm-hmm. and then a, they they sort of peel open multiple of them. For the head of nowhere to come through, piloted by Kraglin. I, that was so cool. That was really fucking cool. Just and you know what? Disney, 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 Disney. This is this is one of your films. Um, please take note. This was a better Death Star than the Death Stars in the sequel trilogy. <laughs> I I gotta agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, okay, look, we've seen that fucking head in so many movies now, like, it, it it's such a smart move to be like, oh yeah, we're literally going to pilot nowhere, because first of all, it's a cool moment for Craglin, second mm-hmm. of all, now there's even more stakes, because not only did we just see an entire planet explode, here's nowhere right next to the high evolutionary it it honestly made me tense because i was like okay now there's people to lose and yeah there's all these people from the start of the film all these people from the holiday special are here you know howard the duck is on that planet right now and we could see howard the duck veteran of the end game final battle howard the duck are they gonna give him his own thing? We know it's coming. It's it's only a I, matter I, of time. I, I, could see, I could see an I am group style thing. I could I could see a couple of shorts on Disney Plus for Howard the Duck. I don't know. I feel like one day here's the thing. I know people are like, oh don't give him a solo movie. Do give him a Disney Plus TV show, but every episode is just a different adventure with Howard and a different Marvel character. Batman Brave and the Bold this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, oh my god, just, when you see that giant head next to his ship, it was that moment of, oh fuck, we're in the climax. And I think, while it was really cool, and I thought, this is gonna be the coolest part of the climax, where there's this big laser coming out of this monocle on nowhere. (laughs) I think the highlight for me, and I'm... I'm, I'm assuming this is the highlight for you, too. I guess we're going to find out. Daredevil, you got some competition. <laughs> the Beastie Boys hallway fight, yeah. yeah. Fucking no sleep till Brooklyn. Guardians fighting in that hallway. It, I know it's not one shot. Like, I know it's a trick. But it yeah. looked like one shot. And it looked yeah. really cool. Yeah. Mantis just kick flipping and jumping all over the place. Rocket like got swinging on... up, swinging up Groot's extended mm-hmm. arm. And Rocket got on Groot's shoulder again. <laughs> there, there were so many little moments in that scene where I was like, "All right, we're in a Guardians of the Galaxy finale. This is great." <laughs> mm-hmm. Again, I did. I do love this movie. For the record, I just sometimes you got to be mean to your kids. You love your kids. Sometimes you got to be mean to them. Sure. I also like it, something I realized in that scene as well is that aside from Groot who doesn't wear clothes throughout this film they gradually get more and more of the Guardians into the uniform mm-hmm. as they go I'm like oh, that, it, it, it's, it's like that. assemble it, it's almost assembling the team again it's getting them all suited and booted for this final fight mm-hmm. that, that, that was a nice wee touch and then seeing them all there in that scene was great great I, I contend that Rocket still looks the best in his uniform. I, I think Rocket just pulls off that look so well for some reason. Sure, yeah. I Again, I'm. it's a nitpick. I know it's a nitpick. It's a cool outfit. I would have liked to see Star-Lord wear his mask in this movie. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> The shop that I work at just got a replica of his of his mask. Maybe that's why store. I'm thinking about it. I saw that in a store the other day, and I was like, "Ooh, yeah. I, I kind of want to get that." And it just no, wasn't I remember seeing, in this movie. 
like edits and concepts of like oh well, they're wearing the, the comic accurate like outfit in this film oh i wonder if it'll be gold with like the sort of star emblem at the front of it and stuff the new paint job or something but uh, it, it doesn't show up at all i mean that's a shame as it is just one of the more sort of iconic visuals from this series mm-hmm. it but doesn't i hurt think the movie for me it doesn't hurt the movie at all but I also think now having them all in the uniform balances that. It's like, here's your iconic Guardians look for this film. It's like, yeah, I, works. I really liked the that they kept repeating doing that shot of them all walking together. Like it starts when yeah. Peter's all drunk and they got to take him home. Then they have it on the Flesh Planet where they barely made it out. And then they have it with the whole theme and it's really good. Also just realized if at any point in this film Peter had had the helmet, then that last, then the scene where he almost dies wouldn't have worked. Yeah, well, easy fix for that. High high evolutionary breaks it. That's all you gotta do. That's what Ego did. Yeah. Actually, has he had it since then? Yeah, he did. He had it in, uh, he had it in in-game. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Wait a minute, why, why didn't he put on his helmet in space? We never saw him wear it in this film. He, he was drunk at the start when they went on the mission. Oh, maybe, maybe he left it on. <laughs> I would have loved that if he did die, and then someone's like, why didn't he just wear his helmet? And Rocket's like, he was drunk off his ass. He left it in his room. <laughs> that would have been hilarious yeah. in a really sad way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that would have... that's No, that's what Love and Thunder would have done. Uh- <laughs> You, you we, know that we're just gonna shit on Love and Thunder this whole time. No, we're gonna we're no no no. I, I've made one crack at Love and Thunder. We're gonna, we'll, we'll we'll keep talking Guardians. Well, do we not want to talk about the Dumpling God in Love and Thunder? We can keep shitting on Love and Thunder. I'm okay with it. On CGI characters, <laughs> you said in the spoiler before we got to spoilers. Like, oh, any any characters that stood out to you? I'm like, I'll, I'll save this for the spoiler section. Floor is the most precious thing I have ever seen in my life. So, my mom asked me if that fucked up weird little rabbit thing was in the comics, and I looked at her disgusted and said, No, Floor was not in the comics, but you will respect her. (laughs) That little spider robot thing is adorable to me, and I will fight anybody who doesn't think so. (laughs) Agreed. I realized... My love for Batch, uh, 89 or is it 98? Uh, 89, 89, I think. 99, I think. Okay. We're for, for about Rocket Bad Batch? No, no, for... for <laughs> oh, oh, in this movie. Rocket, it's, <laughs> okay. it's friends, yeah, this film. I, I, think, I think it's 89. I think it is 89, 90, I think you're right. 90s when he actually gets it to work. Mm. No, Batch 89... I realized that my love for them is directly proportionate to how physically close to Rocket they were mm-hmm. in their cells. Because <laughs> you have Rocket and Floor sharing a cell. And, and then Lila is sort of across from Rocket, and then he sort of furthest from Rocket. How dare you like, oh, man, I, like loved, that. I loved Floor. Lila was really cute. And Teeth was fun, and I felt sad for Teeth. I, I kind of love Teeth's line of. I guess I'll call myself Teefs. But it's not because you don't have Teefs. It's just my teeth are much more prevalent than yours. <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah. I, I'm going to be real. I knew they were going to die from the very start, but like... Oh, of course. I, yeah, I found myself loving them anyways. But Floor, yeah. just because Floor was adorable and had really funny lines where she's oh. like fun chase and stuff like that yeah and Floor just running around just having the time of her life with Rocket in the cell oh god Uh, the fact that Rocket's first ever words were hurts (sighs) my heart god I'm not made of stone people no there was there was silence in the theater for a good while at the start of this film Mm -hmm. dead silence we, we mm. didn't get an applause moment in my film. We never got one. But we did have a lot of <gasps> and gas moments. Yeah. Yeah. I, in the second scene that made... The first scene that... One of the scenes that made me cry. Mm. 
or heard other people crying in the theater. Yeah, yeah, just openly weeping and sobbing and sniffling. <laughs> Which was Teeth, Lila, and Thor's death scene. Mm. Dear fuck. God, it... Look, when she got out, I was like, okay, is it gonna happen now? Or is it gonna happen during the escape? And then you just hear the music stop and you're like, oh, fuck. It's happening right after he hugged her. Really? And yep. here's the thing. That is that is not the scene that, that made me cry or freak out. But I will say this. Rocket's reaction of just screaming and mm. then the fucking high evolutionary starts screaming back and mocking him? I don't think I've hated a character more in recent memory. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus, when he's just mocking him. At first, when Rocket goes up and starts scratching his face, I'm like, yeah, Rocket, get him. But then he keeps scratching it, his it, face. It keeps going. <laughs> and he keeps scratching his face, and I'm like, Rocket, R R Rocket, it's okay. You can stop. Rocket just killed the bastard. Stop. And he keeps going. I, how long was that scene? Because it felt like a whole minute. But it couldn't have been a whole minute. <laughs> no. But it felt it, yeah. It, it really felt like they made us watch this raccoon. Like, you see his eye. You see some of the blood. It, it, it feels like you're watching it for forever. To the point where when they showed his face at the end, I was like, yeah, that's about what that would look like. Oh, and by the way, when to, they to me, when they when they reveal his his face, well, his lack of a face at the end, no, that, that was a surprise to me because I'm like, ah, oh, okay, he's all scratched up, and oh, okay, he's, he's fixed his face, but he's had to like stretch it back and stuff. And then the payoff to Peter, nah, it's a face off. It's not a trap. It's a face off. It's a face. -off. Oh my gosh. I I'd like to think there were some practical effects in there mixed with some CG enhancement and stuff, but it might have been completely CG. I couldn't it tell, which real. is best kind of effect it, that is the best kind is when you can't tell the the best kind of effect is the reason that is the best kind if you can't tell your brain just kind of tells you it's real <laughs> yeah and it yeah. looked real mm. so w would you like to hear about the scene that made me cry yeah yeah we're gonna need names in the new world <laughs> so <sighs> When they're going around and they're picking their names, I don't know why this hit so hard, but it really did. When Floor was like, I play on the floor. I will be Floor. That just made me laugh. Lila wanted an actual name. Teeth's kind of got a joke name too. But then fucking Rocket had to come out here and make me cry when he's like, we're going to go off into space together. We're going to explore the world. We're gonna soar through the sky. That'll be me. Rocket. Jesus, man! Aww. Oh. <laughs> it, 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 it... I, 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 I love it. <laughs> there, mm. I love when they make stuff like that really important. And... It really fits, because at the end... He has the great line of Rocket Raccoon, and he finally accepts the full name. Oh, God, just... I'm struggling to talk about the scene because it was so beautiful, and I'm trying to think of all the ways I can say, it's beautiful. But truthfully and honestly, chat, this is one of those scenes that demands to be watched. And if for some reason you wanted to watch this this spoiler review without seeing the movie, just just like with No Way Home and the apartment scene, go watch that one. <laughs> like if if you see nothing else in this movie but you give an ounce of a shit about a Rocket, go see that scene. And you can see that scene. It is available on YouTube. Is it? They released that scene in advance of the movie as a promo. Yeah. Oh, it did. I didn't watch it until after. I was like, no, no, no. I, I, I want to avoid as much as I can in terms of actual, just straight up content from the film. But no, you can you can see that scene on YouTube. I, <laughs> which I have done many times since, just for I like to play on the floor. I'm on the floor. I'll call myself floor. <laughs> I I am watching that tonight. Got mm. rockets. 
just the whole speech, it you can tell that James Gunn really took a while to write that because of how important it is. Mm. And really, this movie is all about Rocket really accepting himself and accepting that past to the point where he says, Rocket Raccoon. It feels... It, it's like when... It, more comparisons. It's like when Cap said Avengers Assemble. It really yep. made that phrase more important now that you know, oh, he chose his own name and he chose it because he had this dream that he never got to accomplish. But at the end when he says that name, he did accomplish the dream. He has his friends there. He made yeah, it happen. He, yeah, he did get to. Yeah. I, I just, Not the same friends, but yeah, he did. I, he got there, though, you know? Like, that, that was... Yeah. I, I oh, that. and when, the, <laughs> when, when Rocket's in that sort of limbo space, I get Marvel lore, whatever we're going for, MCU, astral plane, um, bloody ancestral plane, and the Duat, and the, all, all afterlifes and stuff. Mm. But it, it, when Lila's there talking to him, and then gestures to the others, and T, Teeth and Floor are just in the background, just... just Floor just jumping and having fun and they're, they're they're all good. They're good still. We need some plushies of these characters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, what's so interesting about Marvel, and I, I hope other stories in the future do this, is literally they just sort of decided, hey, we got multiple different after lives, and because of that. With a scene like this, you don't know, is it just something Rocket's making up in his head? Is it real? And this is Rocket passing on? You don't know. And I kind of love that you don't know. Yeah. I, oh God, Rocket's whole backstory is so great. Just that yeah. moment when he realizes, oh, God, I, this was one of the most evil moments for the high evolutionary for me. When he just is like, he almost looks drunk. When he's stumbling in, and mm. he, like, gets Rocket out of the cage. When he's had his revelation, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Chad, if you didn't see the movie, go watch the movie. But also, at this point, Rocket has helped the High Evolutionary succeed in making these new beings he wants to make. Rocket figured out how to do it. Now, you would think, oh, this is wonderful. Maybe the High Evolutionary is going to reward him but he's not going to take the others, and that's where the conflict will be. Nope. The High Evolutionary is pissed that Rocket was the one who figured this out, and he wasn't. And it's... Oh my god, it's such an infuriating scene, but it's so well acted, where he's just mm. like, You? You thought you were going? You're so smart you could figure this out, but that didn't occur to you? Fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it it breaks my heart because Rocket's just sitting there crying and he's he figures it out, he makes the card, he gets them all out. And then Lila dies. And then he, I I gotta believe that he blames himself a bit for what happened to both Teeth and uh Oh he he blames himself for what happened to all of them. Oh, I one hundred percent totally agree. But I, I feel like if I were in the situation, Rocket theoretically could have tried to stop them from firing, but instead they got shot, Florentiefs did, so I don't know. Maybe if he would have just run, ran, they would have had a chance together. I don't know. Mm. It I, was mm. it, it was that moment is when the camera is you you got Rocket sort of in the center and it pans over to Teeth and me are already in love before that just don't 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 and it pans across no ah fuck <laughs> ah you see I, I didn't want to see that you see i didn't think they were dead like i i didn't even realize it i was like okay well what's gonna happen next and then he just turns around and i see him dead and i'm like oh shit they died yeah <laughs> like th that kind of surprised me a little like lila mm -hmm. like Lila, 
there was no reality where Lila was getting out of there. But no, I expected Lila to maybe make it as far as the escape ship. I expected Lila to almost get away. I thought she was gonna sacrifice herself. That's that's mm. kind of why the just straight up now she's dead was still a little surprising, even though I saw it mm. coming. It's it's um it's the end of Clone Wars. Mm. You know, Order sixty six is going to happen. You don't know the details of how it's going to go down, but you know it's going to happen. Oh, God. And when you know these details, like, God, they're tragic in such mm. a beautiful way. And, by the way, just to talk a little bit about the criticism about animal violence in this movie, I get it. And if, if anybody doesn't want to watch this movie because of that, I, I completely see it. There's some rough scenes in here. That yeah. bunny is fucking adorable. That bunny is also fucking dead. And they Fuck show shut up. Again. <laughs> Jack, I feel like you've been wronged by the death of this bunny. Kind of. <laughs> you gonna go beat up Kevin Feige? No, just you? James Gunn. Alright, well, wait till he makes Superman. <laughs> then we can beat him up. Hmm. Depending on the quality of that film, we might beat him up a little harder than we intended to. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. What mm. else should we talk about in this beautiful movie? Let's let's pick let's pick some babies to talk about. How about mm. Nebula? Let's give her some time mm. in the sun. So Nebula's gun arm is the coolest goddamn thing in the universe. That is fucking awesome. When she has the big ass sword so and the big round gun. I mean, in my cinema, they showed it before the film, mm. but I saw it a while before. Have you seen the Blue Beetle trailer yet? I have seen the Blue Beetle trailer. You know, at the end, it's like, ah, oh, I can make anything you can imagine. And it's like, ah, it's a sword. It's a sword. Okay, it's basically Cloud Sword. And it looks kind of naff. Mm. And that's the whole fucking focus of that character and the suit and the powers is that. And it looks kind of shit. Mm. Here's, oh, here's Nebula. Here's this one little additional thing to Nebula. And it's infinitely cooler than that. I mean... As presented in the trailer, the film isn't out yet. I was gonna say, I, I was gonna defend comic Blue Beetle, but... I'm gonna oh, no, I don't know, Brave and the Bold Blue Beetle, I love. I'm right there with you. I, I, you know, I'm on the hate train today. I didn't love the Blue Beetle trailer, but I'm still optimistic. <laughs> Well, they, they showed stuff from the past Blue Beetles, so I'm optimistic that the movie yeah, will still yeah, be well, good. Jay Garrett, yeah. Also, like, Jaime's a great character, so hopefully that'll be enough to make the movie great. But <laughs> w with Nebula in this movie, I, I was taken off guard a little bit just how many scenes she had of being loving towards the Guardians. And it, it really made me realize, like, it, I, I think the moment when she cries after mm. finding out like rockets, the rockets okay i it really hit me where i was like oh yeah the guardians got snapped and rocket and nebula had to hang out alone for five years yeah they probably have a deep bond i, I really hope and karen gillian is not confirmed to like be done in the role so kind of hope she comes back kind of hope we see her again and they seem to be suggesting we might see Rocket again, too. So, fingers crossed. You know, worst comes to worst, they had a good movie to go out on. But, fingers crossed, I'd love to see him again. I, I think Nebula in this movie was really cool. And there were some scenes of, like, obviously Mantis kind of calls her out at one point where she's like, you just love yelling at people and you're always angry. You're so controlling and all that. And... I, I really think that with Nebula's character, they really connected some dots for me in this film to the point where I'd kind of like to see her and Star-Lord maybe get together. I don't know. I kind of like the idea of it. I don't know if I'd go that far. Well, but... here's the thing. There's, there's one scene where I, I think I kind of would say it because... It's the moment at the beginning where she's tucking him into bed and he just grabs her arm and goes, I love you, Gamora. 
I don't know why, but right there I was like, I could see this happening now. I could kind of see this. Yeah, in that scene, I'm like, is that the angle they're going to go? Okay, I don't know if I'm necessarily here for it, but we'll, we'll see. And it's not the angle they went with in this film. Fine, again, I wasn't... I, I don't ship them, per se. But no, just ask this group of friends and everything, I think, is perfectly fine by me. Um, but on Gamora... Yeah, it'd be cool. I think it'd be cool to see any of these characters again. Um, but if we don't ever see any of them again, I mean, we're seeing Star Lord again. But if, other than him, if we don't see any of the others, that is completely fine by me. I am happy with this ending for them all. But on... We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> sure. But on Gamora... Sorry, not Gamora. I've said, I've said Gamora twice, haven't I? Nebula. Nebula. <laughs> for Nebula. This film, yeah, she's got the sort of nano weave arm thing. What I really liked, though, in this is, and it's something they play around with quite a few times in a lot of the fight scenes with all these characters together, is everyone playing to their strengths and just how different their fighting styles are. Mm -hmm. So Nebula, being able to take some of these like, serious hits, like when my head is dislocated and she keeps fighting and just pops it back up again. You know, broken arm, oh, just fix that back around really creative and fun fight scenes with these characters. And Nebula, I think, got a, a solid number of them here. Mm -hmm. uh, but yep, her with Ro her finding out Rocket was alive, that, that hit, that was really sweet. Well, yeah. ne Nebula kind of seems like... I, I think that with this film, Rocket's mostly out of commission. So, mm. like, may maybe that's why I feel this way. But it kind of felt like it, it kind of felt like Quill was, like, team leader. But Nebula was kind of co-captain in a lot of these scenes. Like, whenever sure. they split up, usually Nebula and Star-Lord stuck together. Um, mm. She was giving orders a lot in this, too. Honestly, yeah, I, I think wouldn't mind seeing because, her own thing. Yeah, I think... Because you have Star-Lord as the leader... Nebula is sort of the closest thing to, even compared to Star Lord, it's the closest thing to a straight man in this team. So she bounces well off, or I suppose more accurately, they all bounce well off of her. Mm -hmm. Just any, any combination, any character with Nebula. Again, like we were saying with Mantis. There were some fun with Drax. Yeah, yeah. But then equally, I think that work. You can say that about any of the characters, Mantis and Peter. Scenes are great. Mantis and Groot scenes are great. Mantis and Cosmo. A any combination of these characters, they're all just really well-defined and lovable characters. Mm -hmm. That you love seeing them interact in any combination. Which speaks to... Which speaks very much to the strength of James Gunn's writing for this film. Again, so... He's, he's confirmed, like, one thing about the Superman movie so far, and the only thing he confirmed was Jimmy Olsen's in it. And I was like, yeah, yeah come on. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> he gets it. He's gonna get it, yeah. hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, I I like Nebula in this movie a lot. I I think that, like, I, I think her ending is very fitting. Like, I, I have a problem with some of the endings in this movie, but for Nebula specifically, the fact that she's, like, taking all these children in and essentially raising them and keeping taking care of them it really fits her character considering what happened to her with thanos and hmm. it, it reminds me of the line that gamora had in the second movie where she's like what about all the countless little girls that got tortured by thanos and then nebula was like i will avenge them by taking out thanos but now she's kind of focusing more on just making life better yeah. for these people. Making sure kids get to have the childhood that she never did. Mm -hmm. And then also, her not being the leader of nowhere, because that's Cosmo, but um, focusing on the rebuilding of it now after that big fight. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go on to other characters' endings. Uh, I think leave Star Lord and Groot and Rocket for last because they're the ones who are off doing some of the more interesting things. I think, but 
Nebula, we're both happy with. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm satisfied with Nebula. I do want to yeah. see her come back just because I love the character so yeah. much. Um, but you know, if this is the last we see of Nebula, sad because I love her, but honestly, the idea of like th there's that new character that came in. What was her name? Uh, Phyla, I believe, was the name yes. of the little girl. Yeah, so maybe there will be a time jump at some point. I, I figure that character's probably going to keep going in the MCU. And maybe we could hear stories about this more motherly side of Nebula. Or maybe give Phyla a project where Nebula's in it as a supporting character. That could be neat to see. Could be Phyla is off with the Guardians. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I think that still the Guardians probably view Nowhere as, like, home base. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. So, like, I, my brother let my cat in here and now he wants out, so I'm off screen briefly. But, I, I think there's room to put Nebula back in there. If she's gone, though, I am satisfied. And I'm okay with that one. Should... <laughs> I, I want to keep talking about good stuff before we get straight into the bad, but there's... Okay, um, we, touched, we touched on it briefly, so Gamora? Mm -hmm. Gamora's ending? Gamora's ending. You know, I, I gotta be real, I, I don't feel a ton for her ending. Because, like, I, I like Sylvester Stallone's character, and... There was one cringy part of that, like, cool guy with the portals. But besides that, that guy's fucking awesome. So the idea of them doing... The emoji, I guess. The emoji, yes. They, sure. It would be the emoji. I don't know. Maybe maybe if they would have... He, he, he did that in volume two. He, he did a thumbs up emoji. A, there's a difference between a thumbs up and straight up the crying emoji that I could use on my phone right now. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Like, may maybe if it was, like, an emoji of his own face, which would have been funny to animate, maybe I would have liked that. It doesn't have a mouth. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Touche, sir. <laughs> I, here, let me bring out my judge's gavel. Jack of all trades, you have won this debate. <laughs> Still, fuck the emoji thing. <laughs> They could have passed sure. some other way. Sure. <laughs> sure. I don't know. I don't know how you would do it either. Um, no. But I don't know. It just... I don't think it was bad, and I like that the last scene we're going to see of Gamora is her, like, hugging friends, and she did find a family. That's good. But, like, I don't know. Of all the endings, I think I would say Gamora's is probably the weakest. And sure. I, I don't mean that as an insult. This this was more about the Guardians, and Gamora chose not to be a Guardian. And yeah. I, I, I don't dislike it. It's just, I don't know. It, it's not as poetic as what Rocket got, but what yes. will be. No, I think, and even just on that comparison between Gamora's and Rocket's, Rocket is the main character of this film. Mm-hmm. There. Gamora, th this version of Gamora is the character we've known the least for the least amount of time. Mm -hmm. So, that's, her that's having fair. the least affecting ending, it's an ending that we're satisfied with, yeah. It doesn't hit super hard, yeah. But it's this, again, this Gamora we've only seen in a few scenes in Endgame and this. I that's, mean, that's fair. So, that, 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 that works. That yeah, works. Could be more, could be more interesting, could be better. Don't think it needs to be. Ticks the box. I'm happy with it. You know, I I also kind of forgive it a little bit because like Gamora had a great ending in Endgame, so mm. like in Infinity War, really, when she, when our Gamora died, that was <laughs> yeah. God. That movie really is Gamora's for a good chunk of it, and it is great. But yeah, yeah, I I think I'll give you that. It's. It's not the best ending in the world, but we have another ending for this character, so, like, I, acceptable. I give it a solid yeah. acceptable. Yeah. And cue the O, because now that means that she's with, like, the legacy guardian, or the 
comic book original Guardians team of like Yondu, but he's dead. Um, that magician red guy with the emojis, the head voiced by, funnily enough, Cher isn't here, uh, Tara Strong in this film. Um, yeah, she and, replaced uh, Miley Cyrus. Yeah, and uh, Sylvester Stallone's character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Drax's ending. Sure. So I, here's the thing. I like where it ended up. I just wish there would have been a bit more build up to it. I I feel like, God, I I think we are gonna have to argue about this just a little. The scene where Drax gets on the motorcycle and goes to like help Gamora and Nebula, that pissed me off, because not only is he ditching Rocket in that moment. But he's also tricking Mantis into doing it, too. Like, he couldn't just leave Mantis as, like... And I know Mantis isn't, like, the strongest of the Guardians, but there's stuff she could have done. No, he, he's got a trick her into coming. <laughs> Against Adam, probably not, but no. Then she's, yeah. Well, then again, she can put people to sleep, so... Yeah, actually true, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Maybe she would have been an ace in the hole for that shit. She was key to the the original plan for Thanos. So like, yeah. don't fuck with Mantis. And the plan for Ego and yeah, yeah. And she ends this film with three dragon creatures going all Khaleesi on her asses. So like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Mantis might not be someone we should fuck with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree. Uh, Drag's leaving on the motorbike. I, I, I felt th- it felt weird. I don't have like an issue with it. It's like oh, he, he, he thinks he'd be better over there, helping over there than standing guard. I, sure, that, that that fits for his character. I think it's a dumb decision. But this is Drax. Not to insult him, that that, that that's a point that they bring up later. So you, you speak their language. Why didn't you say? Why didn't you ask? I I just feel like with some of the scenes they might have leaned on the he's too dumb side for me because in the first movie he did some really stupid shit like he straight up called Ronan which is yeah. dumb but there's a reason why he did that he did that because he's so obsessed with revenge he literally didn't care if the planet got blown up he just wanted to crack at Ronan that's all he wanted so to that I kind of understand where the stupidity kind of works and with other things like when he's like quipping with the other characters and he's like shoot me in the face iron man i can take it like (laughs) that that felt like he's just cocky in himself and sometimes it felt like he's just trying to fuck with the other marvel characters but in this film i feel like the problem isn't really drax itself himself i feel like the problem is that everybody keeps bringing up how dumb drax is and how drax being dumb is just something we have to work around Hmm. and that also brings up one of my problems with mantis which is actually on my little list of critiques here early in the movie mantis says it's wrong to use your powers on friends and then she hurts Drax's feelings and instantly uses her powers on Drax. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think there's a, there's a different... Well... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hear ye, I hear think... ye. This debate goes to Neil Burris. It does, it does. <laughs> no, I agree with you there. But again, I don't think that's out of character for Mantis. Yeah. This is this is the person who kidnapped Kevin Bacon. Um, I mean, true. But even just in that, is, oh, using your powers on friends. I think there's a difference between I'm going to use my powers to alter someone's it's like psychic powers, but mm. scientifically change someone's brain chemistry and neural pathways to make them forget their heartbreak. Versus, I've hurt your feelings. Let me fix that. I, I think there's, I think there's it, there's levels of it is very much me attempting to defend the choice to, again, alter someone's brain chemistry. <laughs> mm. I, I don't I, know. I, I can shrug that one off. 
it is Mantis being a hypocrite, yes. I, I do think it bugs me specifically because it's like, no, Peter's going through this thing, so I shouldn't use my powers on him. But in the event that I hurt someone's feelings, and that could be bad for me, I definitely will actually do that. <laughs> yes. And I think that could be, that could have been like an arc for Mantis. That could have been something, oh, that she was willing to do at the start and not willing to do by the end of the film. But I think since we've known her, that's, I think that's always been something she's willing to do. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. So it, that, that, that could be an arc down the line in the future, perhaps if Mantis ever comes back. Um, maybe it's because because maybe it's because Mantis specifically was the main one insulting Drax that she kind of got on my nerves a little. Maybe it's because sure. I love Mantis so much, and I, I don't yeah. like seeing her being so aggressive. Maybe it's that. Yeah, and I think uh, again you can point to the holiday special, and think, I think it's really fun to carry over the two of them specifically, like friendship from the holiday special. Which was set up in volume two and stuff, but uh, it's, it's fun just seeing the two of them interact more mm. um, on the oh, our characters keep insulting Strax's intelligence throughout. Again, yes, they do, and they sort of, they always have. Again, uh, mm. <laughs> metaphors are going to go over this guy's head. Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I would catch it. But they, they, they've always done that. It is more aggressive in this film. Yeah. But it, it's in service of that payoff of Drax forcing forcing them to see his value. I I I do kind of like that angle on it. I I I just feel like there is such a difference between first movie Drax and this movie Drax. Maybe I shouldn't yes. have rewatched them all before going in. No, I think that there's a, there's a certain degree of flanderization there. Mm-hmm. I, Not to the extent that I, that I would say he has been flounderized, but no, there's, 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 there's hints of it. But here's the thing. I can forgive this. Because they, they did lean... I wish they would have played with it more, maybe kept it throughout the film, shown Drax's fatherly side a bit more. But mm. it comes in, it works, it, it comes a little out of nowhere, but it really works. Drax is fundamentally the one that like gets these people on their side. And then, Jesus Christ, if there was a second moment that almost made me cry, when those little kids finally get Drax to dance. <laughs> just just seeing him smile, and he, 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 he's not moving, he doesn't do it at all, but then he puts up his arms and he just goes with it, and he's laughing the whole time. <laughs> yeah. There are two kinds of people, those who dance and those who do not, and Drax, you have chosen your side. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's, it's <laughs> an edit of that is that that line of Lord of the Rings is oh there are two types of people in the world. Those who have seen or read Lord of the Rings, and those who are yet to see or read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it's like there are those who dance, and there's those who are yet to dance. <laughs> uh just and you know in that moment, those tears had to be real, because that dance, I wonder if that's the last thing they shot. I, I know that's not always how movies work, but, like, if I were James Gunn, I would be like, and your last scene is going to be you all dancing and just having a good sure. time. Uh, certainly could have been, yeah. It, it always depends on you know when they had access to various sets and stuff yeah, like that. I, I just, but no, it, it might well have been. That would have been really sweet if it was, yeah. Hey, hey, Drax, your last scene is when you get shot in the back. This is the last scene we're filming, and then you're fucking out of here. Have sure. fun. Good luck in the uh, the DCU, because, let's be honest, he's going to end up in there. Oh, yeah. Which, again, is one of those things that we've known since James Gunn was initially fired by Marvel, and this film, again, thank God they got him back. Mm -hmm. um, which, I mean, he, he was well within his rights to be very petty and not come back for this film. Could have straight up refused it. Yeah. But I'm so glad he did. But we've known since then that Dave Bautista he's been in this because of James Gunn, not because of that Marvel money. It's like, oh no, I'm, I'm not coming back for What If, because James Gunn's not involved. Mm. It's like, because of how you handled that, I'm not doing a voice on What If. And then, okay, well this is going to be James Gunn's last, last one. He, he, he doesn't work great with just Marvel. They're probably going to kill his character. 
But no, James Gunn's like, no, these 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 characters are, yeah, no, no, that's that, brilliant, great, love it. Uh just, let me think. As, as, as I look at the cup for characters we haven't talked about the ending for yet. Well, hold on. One more thing on Drax is, I, I know I'm being a little hard on him, but like, <laughs> I really feel like just there was a path here with Adam somehow. Like, Adam loses his mom in this. Maybe we could have seen Adam grieve her a little bit, and that's when Drax steps in. Like, obviously he's on the ship at this point, but, you know, just a simple rewrite could have fixed that. Um, I would have liked to see those characters interact a little bit together. I, I would have liked to see, maybe since this is, like, a character who is stunted youth, and he just lost his mom... Drax comes in as a little bit of a dad character. Feels like we could solve that issue of it feeling not as built up as it could have been. Mm. But that's just me. And I'm sure there are plenty of people who have no problem with how it was handled. No, like, I think the, I think the two points you could have done to build up more of the Drax the dad thing is... Mm. Yeah, I like the idea of an Adam moment, or just more of them interacting in general. I think if you were to put in just, just a quick thing... To add on that, on the idea of, like with Gamora, harkening back to the first film, that moment when Rocket's crying, holding a twig of Groot, and Rex just starts petting him to comfort him. It's like, yeah, maybe a moment like that, or at the end now, Adam's having some sort of moment, and Drax just says or does something just to comfort him in the moment. It, yeah. A- another thing I just thought of, because you brought up Rocket, could have been nice if Drax stood by his body and had some some words while he was on the table like mm. while he was with the oxygen mask and stuff maybe he had some words mm. for rocket or something i don't know there are ways that that could have been improved on a little but like i'm still sure. glad they went for the dad path regardless because if you are gonna yeah. end this character it really makes sense to lean into that especially because mm. he doesn't die at the end yeah like, Drax is just out there right now in the MCU taking care of some kids and hanging out on nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's a beautiful nice. thought. But more characters. God, this so uh, We touched on it briefly. I don't think we'll be brief now as well. Mantis. So, I'm a little split on Mantis in this okay. movie. So, Mantis, for me was probably before this movie was my favorite guardian i think i might be leaning towards nebula now and i i think it's just because she has a lot of scenes where she's yelling and i I get that she's getting frustrated with everybody because no one's listening to her but in my head i'm like guys that's that's an actual criticism you should listen to mantis more (laughs) i i don't know maybe it's just because they're family and they're all bickering all the time like it makes sense but she definitely has that moment where she's like, he's the only person who doesn't hate himself. And I was just sitting there like, Mantis, calm down. You love these people. Come, calm down. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, at that point, she was probably frustrated to the point where it made sense for her to say something like that. But I don't know. There's just little things that kind of got to me with Mantis. And they all they all kind of built up. Like, I think her getting tricked by Drax was kind of (laughs) dumb. Where she's like, you're going to drive us back to the ship? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to drive us back to the ship. (laughs) I I found that a little silly, especially because not too far from now, she's about to call Drax stupid. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Uh, But at the end, when they're talking about all going their separate ways, I really thought mantis was gonna be like i'm going with peter like maybe we could have seen that sisterly bond build more and especially Mm. because she was the one to be like hey you need to go talk to your grandpa like she was the one really pushing that it kind of makes sense i really wanted there be to be a scene where he's like i'm scared to go back will you go with me and that would have been kind of cool instead I, I, I like that she's like, I need to figure out who I am. I like that. <laughs> she just kind of walks off and we have no idea what's happening with her now. 
Like she walks off, and the apple things just climb down the buildings beside her. To come walking. My my brother, because I read the comics, so my family automatically assumes when something happens in this movie, I know how to explain it. So my brother was like, "Where is she going? Did she go somewhere in the comics?" And I was like, "I have no idea where she's going. She's still on nowhere. She's just kind of walking that way. Where is she yeah. going? Is she getting on a ship? Is she leaving?" Where's she going? Finding a ship big enough to carry the the monsters. I do kind of like the idea where she's like, I need to figure out my own path. And she just goes to like a different location on nowhere and just hangs out, gets her own house, raises three <laughs> three giant monsters. <laughs> if she decides that's what she wants to do, yeah, sure. I'd, I'd go to the Mantis Zoo. I'd, I'd see her zoo of like giant creatures she's befriended. <laughs> Yeah, she, she'd be she'd be great animal tamer with that ability. Yeah, Mantis bought a zoo. Make make that the next movie. Yeah, no, Man, Mantis, I'm fine with. Uh, I don't think. Again, b- bearing in mind Mantis's, I, I said in terms of her being tricked. Mm-hmm. Drax is the lowest intelligence member of the Guardians, pretty securely. High emotional intelligence, but um, Einstein intelligence is the lowest. <laughs> Mantis, I think, is just a, a couple rungs above that. Because remember the Guardians holiday special. Remember the the, the candy cane fiasco. <laughs> it, it, she didn't know what it was, though. That made a little yeah, more sense. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, no, Mantis is ending. I think is probably the one I'm least satisfied with, just because it is a mm. I don't know what I'm gonna do ending. Yeah. Which works. I think it works, but it is the most open ended of them. I, I forget who said this somewhere I've been looking like reviews and stuff for this film before we recorded this. Someone said that oh the Guardians of the Galaxy three, it doesn't tie up loose ends, but it ties together loose ends. Mm. Yeah, no, they, they all sort of converge here. And some end, but ah, some, some keep splitting off. And, yeah, yeah. I, I think if, like, I think if, like, a month from now they announce that Mantis is going to be in something, I'd be a little more forgiving. But the idea that the ending is just, yeah, I'm just going to go over here and do a thing, whatever that thing ends up being. I don't know, that's not satisfying to me. I... Sure. And it's okay if I'm in the minority on that. Like, I I think for a lot of people, Mantis wasn't their favorite guardian or anything. I don't even really know how to explain it. I just really latched on to, like, her role in Guardians 2. Specifically, like, her turn to good. And when they made her Quill's sister, I felt this, like, oh my gosh, she's really struggling to tell him this thing. And... (laughs) God, one of my favorite scenes in Infinity War is just when she yells, He mourns! <laughs> like, I don't know why she was so funny and she was, like, so creative in her powers and in the Guardians video game, she is hilarious. So, I really latched on to Mantis as my favorite Guardian. So, <laughs> uh, imagine if, like, Rocket, who is the main character of the movie would have had, like, a not-climactic ending. That's kind of how I feel about Mantis because she was one of my favorites, just to such a high degree. Sure. Mm-hmm. I think... I acknowledge no, I this with... is a Neil problem. No, no, I agree with that in terms of at the end of this. But I do think Mantis had, as we, as we said, the holiday special. Mm-hmm. M- Mantis and Drags were the main characters of the holiday special. That is fair. And Matt Matt just got her payoff there of telling Peter that she's her sister. As an actual ending, as an end for her character, it is the least satisfying, absolutely. But I think think I'll disagree on, oh, in a a couple months they announce uh, Mantis is showing up in this. I want Mantis Mantis showing up again to be a surprise. Mm. I want, in, in Secret Wars... They have, they have, they have like an end game of portals moment to uh, open all these portals or doors or whatever. And, uh, a few tentacles come out, uh, and Mantis is riding <laughs> one of the monsters into battle or something. Oh, that... uh, have, have her pop up again in some fun way. I, I don't need to see what happens next for Mantis. That would that would be cool if like 
I don't know, Star Lord's fighting a Kang variant or something, and like Kang's like, Did you really think you could beat me on your own? And he goes, Of course I didn't, and then Mantis comes in with the fucking big ass creatures. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that stupid. Could even quote what he said in this movie. Yeah. Uh, man. Wait, hold on. We forgot something we had to talk about. Nathan Fillion in this movie. Yeah. I'm sorry. He's he's an idiot. Oh, yeah. I got one of those, too. I hate him. I can't stand him. Right in front of the dude. Yeah. <laughs> and then with Adam. Yeah, again, just, oh, yeah, no, I've, I've got one of, them, one of them, too. Yeah, It was so unexpected and got such a big laugh out of me when that came back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, he was one of those characters, I knew, I knew he was I knew he was going to be in this film, and this is going to be his biggest role in any of the Guardians films so far, because, yeah, he, he had his, cam his voice cameo in the first one, mm -hmm. and they like, cut his cameo from the second one, because future stuff they're doing with characters. Um, but then, no, no, no. He, he was great in this. He, he was great, but and again, I knew he was in this. But that, that got a good audience reaction with him when he showed up. Um, on yes, the last few characters endings, Craglin and Cosmo, still on nowhere, still having a good time. Good dog. Yay! Thumbs up. Honestly, if if Cosmo never shows up again after being called good good dog. That does feel satisfying to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she got the it. Franklin with the Yaka arrow and everything. Yeah. I just love her little speech. I can't quote it exactly where she's like, the Russians sent me into space, and that was nowhere near as terrible as what Kraglin has done. <laughs> and everyone else at the table will just be like, come on, man, just, just apologize. I'm not going like, to lie. <laughs> Oh my god. Right. There, it, uh, there are some great moments in this movie. There's a lot of great moments in this movie, yeah. Uh, but then our last two, well, three, um, in terms of characters we don't know are returning or not, uh, being Rocket and Groot, and thus by extension, mm -hmm. Adam and. Um, oh no, yeah, Kraglin and Cosmo were with them as mm -hmm. Guardians members in uniform. Cosmo with the Guardians yeah, uniform we can all. Yeah, all together. Raglan with the Guardian's uniform on. <laughs> so, I, I think, first of all, I think Adam Warlock definitely is coming back in something. Like, I, I wonder <laughs> why you even introduce him if this would have been his only movie. Uh, I, sure. I, I feel like he'll come back. But with Rocket and Groot, um, first of all, I did like the little Arquicamora being able to understand him at the end. And James Gunn did actually, I kind of figured this out, but James Gunn actually tweeted to say, hey, at the end, when they all understand Groot, that's you, the audience, being able to hear Groot as well. Like, that's, yeah. you get to hear what he's saying in that moment. I hope that in future things, we still just hear I am Groot, though. Oh, if, if he pops up again, still, still just that. But for that moment, we understood Groot. Absolutely. Hello, Rocket. It is I, Groot. This is my opinion on the situation. I also like that James Gunn confirmed that half of Groot's dialogue in the first couple of movies are mostly vulgar swear words. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I... Again, why don't you just touch him and make him happy? I am Groot. No, God, no! <laughs> Not like that. And then, this is the one time I really liked dumb Drax when he was like, well, which one of us should touch Peter and make him happy? <laughs> like, he just takes it as a valid plan. Yeah. That, that was one moment where it really worked, but that, I don't know. There's a difference between not understanding metaphor and, eh, eh. Yeah. Potato, uh, potato. Yeah, but the post credit scene of them all discussing the, their favorite songs, again, limited to what is on the Zoom. <laughs> but, no, that was, that was really sweet. That was really fun. It was a good moment for uh, Adam. He got to. Yeah. It was a good Adam moment too. Which again, he didn't. He didn't get enough of. So the ones that we did get shine. Um, Groot being his, I dare say, more comic accurate <laughs> self and scale. Well, in the post credits, nice. That's that's King Groot. Essentially, what happens is, uh, God, I have not read this shit in forever. Um. So, 
Groot descends from like this planet and there's a reason that they can get so big but Groot gets big for like a specific reason I believe he's supposed to be like the ruler of his people which okay. are in danger um sure so I, I I can't remember if that's called Alpha Groot or King Groot. Uh, I mm. think it's King Groot. But here's the thing. This is why I'm really excited for that big ass Groot. I have not been a fan of Smart Hulk recently because I feel like we have lost some of the big monsterish fight scenes that we can get with the Incredible Hulk versus smart hulk mm -hmm. we got a giant monster again and we know the thing is coming soon so if we can't see the thing fight hulk because he's too smart now maybe we could get him fighting a giant ass group yeah yeah i'm just saying eventually x-men gotta get in here and we gotta get someone who can fight juggernaut <laughs> and on group before i forget the, the kaiju mode oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> No, a lot, a lot, of, and then just the visual of after he was like decapitated and his eyes, we spider head thing, of sort of growing just like the skeleton, just sort of thinner vines first the as he then sort of grows himself concerns, throughout man. the film. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I do love that it's Nebula of all people who tells him to go full kaiju. Yeah, like of all Which is, the people. Again, they've said that this is a plan. This is like. An action plan. Like, this is this is what we do. They've done this before. They practiced this. Mm -hmm. So, so to tie it to Rocket, Rocket's ending is pretty goddamn perfect. I, I don't have a ton to say about that. The fact that yeah. like Peter goes, well, I need to go to Earth, and Rocket's just like, that's it. No more Guardians. Well, there will always be Guardians, but they need a leader. Rocket officially becoming the leader of the Guardians and leading his own team. God, that's perfect, given what they set up in this movie. Because now it yeah. shows, like, even if, like, the Guardians disband and that team goes away, Rocket will always find family. And that's that's such a good lesson to, to end on for that character. Yeah. I, and just because just you've lost yeah. family, and then, like, he finds a new one. Mm -hmm. And then when that one comes to an end he, st he still finds a new one he's not he's not put down by that anymore you know which yeah, is a fun thing i think will be a fun thing going back and I'm, i intend to do this i'm going to rewatch all the guardians films and then go and see the third <laughs> three in the cinema again <laughs> is now knowing rocket's backstory going into the first film oh yeah of how against everyone he is is the world is against him huh? How is, many, is very much his outlook. How many of those lines take on a whole different meaning now? Where it's like, I didn't ask to be made, and we all have dead people. Now we know Rocket's dead people. I, I didn't think of the we all have dead people. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, yeah. I, I think the beautiful thing about it is they're saying, yeah, Rocket, it, they're still dead. Floor, Teefs, Lila, they didn't come back, they're still dead. But... Just because Rocket lost love doesn't mean he should stop loving. And now that we know he's leading the Guardians, we know he's he's always going to have a family. Even if different members come and go, he's always going to have people. Yeah. And that's, that's a beautiful ending, considering just how much they torture this character in this movie. <laughs> Hurts. <Yeah>. Agreed. <laughs> So then, last but not least, the last Guardian member ending, Star-Lord. Who? Fuck you. <laughs> well done. No, that was very quick. Well done. I was expecting you. If, if you yeah. said Peter Quill, I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, A legendary Star-Lord will return. Uh, Again, I'm, I'm glad they played. Oh, yeah. I'm glad that that wasn't the song they played for the dance at the end, but I'm glad that they still played it at the end. I mean, you know, that's just a nice little thing during the credits to wrap it all together. Yeah. Uh, so, Peter going back, I, I feel like... Hmm, I'm of two minds about this. For one, 
I think it is a little weird where it's like, let's fight to get Rocket back. Let's fight to save this family. Our family is the most important thing in the world. Okay, we got Rocket got back. Hey, guys. I gots to go. <laughs> I gotta leave. <laughs> I... Here's the thing. I like this ending. I do. Because that was the big criticism. Like, you saw it in how it should have ended. People brought it up. They were like, his grandpa is still just out there and he abandoned him. They address it. They bring it up. They talk about it. And that's really cool. And <laughs> I'm being a little silly. I do like how it ended for him. I like that he went home. I like that he's back on Earth. I like that he's connecting with his actual blood family. I just think maybe there there should have maybe been a time jump or something. Maybe something say like, oh yeah, two months later or something. Uh, just something to imply that right after they saved the day and got Rocket back, Peter didn't immediately get on a ship and leave. <laughs> I don't think that happened, but the film no. doesn't show enough to imply that it didn't. <laughs> I, I think just just the understanding that he's in a different outfit on a different planet. I, I, I take that to mean there's been a bit of a time skip. Months? Maybe not, but it wasn't like the next day or anything. When, when, Gr when Drax does the dance after saying bye to Mantis... They're still hmm. wearing the same outfits, aren't they? They're still wearing the Guardians uniforms. Sure. That kind of implies just a little bit that it's still the same day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll grant that. That's, yeah. And, and, and uh, here's the thing. I, if it is the same day, like, it's a movie. I can forgive that part a little bit. Like, yeah. th this is a nitpick, but <laughs> I still think it's funny to think that... <laughs> Peter was like, we gotta save my best friend. We gotta save my best friend. See ya! Gotta hang out with my granddaddy. Morris Drax repeatedly pointed out, second best friend. Second best. <laughs> yeah, Drax. I think... I, I like him going back to his granddad. As we said, again, it's addressing that, that criticism that, that they meant, oh, he's, he's been running this entire time from that reality. Mm -hmm. So, going back to face it, I do think that very much Peter is spending, because his granddad is old. But once his granddad eventually passes, I, I can very much see him going back into space. I can I very see much see him joining back up with the rest of them. Yeah, I, I don't think this is, like, just as the credit said, I don't think this is the end of Star-Lord. No. Um, and had it been the ending, I don't know, that's that's kind of a climactic end. He went home, he reconnected, and who knows, maybe one day he will have more adventures. Who's to say? Yeah. I think as well, it's, for the time being, for Secret Wars, for whatever stuff in the future, mm -hmm. is going to come from this. The rest of the Guardians, with, with Peter not being a part of the team at the moment... They don't really have a connection to Earth and Earth-based events and other Earth-based heroes and everything. That's true. They have a connection to Peter, this one guy on this planet, mm -hmm. versus Peter's, like, this, this is my home, this is where I was born, this is where my mom died. He has so much on Earth. Now the rest of them just have, uh, there's Peter. He, so if he calls them, they'll come running, no doubt. But now it's like, oh, okay, for crossovers and stuff, uh, yeah, Star-Lord will be there. The rest of the Guardians might be there. It, the, it won't feel weird if they're not. Mm. They they do have... Hmm. They they have two, two things. Number one, Rocket still has a connection to Thor. So yeah. may, maybe they'd go back for Thor. Uh, hmm. By the way, thank God Thor wasn't in this movie because, God, that would have been a little too much. I, again, James Gunn saying, yeah, no, I had no plans for putting Thor in this movie. <laughs> Uh, but uh, another thing is in in game they have that one shot of like everybody talking in hologram and Rocket is in the meeting, so hmm. like they they have some sort of way of communicating with Earth. So yeah, Rock, Rocket and Nebula are both in that hologram Zoom call. Yeah, I I do not think this is the last we're gonna see of Rocket or Groot. <laughs> I Gamora and Drax, absolutely. Nebula is the only one where I'm like, I really don't know. Mantis, I'm 50 50 on, could happen, could not. Rocket and Groot, I'm pretty sure they'll be back. 
Nebula, I really don't know. Like, I yeah. have no idea how that one's going to turn out. And I think realistically, Rocket and Groot are pretty safe calls because they are CGI characters. Mm -hmm. So all you need is people with computers to animate them and the voice actor to come and stand in a booth for a few hours. Mm -hmm. So I they're, they're pretty safe for coming back. I agree. I, I think that's probably a big part about them being the survivors. Also, I do question how much time passed between that after credit scene and the events of this movie. Because Groot's fucking huge. Craglin yep. doesn't look all that much older, but Groot is huge. I mean, Groot went from baby Groot to yeah, small Groot in well, that took... At whatever time span. I believe... In fact, Dragon's appearance didn't change much in that either. Somebody told me this. Someone told me the exact time, MCU style, between Guardians 2 and Guardians 3. I think it was somewhere along the lines of 10 years. Okay. So so that Makes would... Sense. that If that's true, that would mean in 10 years, Groot goes from baby to teenager to swole Groot. So from there, maybe maybe like two or three, maybe five years to get into giant fucking huge ass group. Yeah. And again, there could be who knows what happened on their adventures. You could have been exposed to something. You could have yeah, who knows? Oh no, Groot ate the Mario mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. It's another plant. It's not actually fungus are not plants. <laughs> uh, yeah. I do want to, it, it's, it's been in my head, but we've sort of moved on from mm. uh, the high evolutionary stuff. But the la last new thing that I want to touch on is only sort of another bullet point in my head is, let me, let me pull up the phase four. Again, this is this is phase five. This is the oh, second yeah. film, phase five. Oh, yeah. look, look, looking back at the fa phase four movies. Mm. Okay. Wakanda forever. Namor. Or Namor. Great. Good yeah, villain. Fuck yes. <laughs> Love and Thunder. Gore was a bit shaky. Gore, Doctor Strange. Gore didn't Wanda. have stream time. Yeah. Multiverse of Madness. Wanda. Yeah. N no Way Home doesn't count. No Way Home is <laughs> so many villains. Brilliant. But Eternals. Shang-Chi. Pretty good. Black Widow. Dear God. Marvel villains have always been kind of hit and miss in the MCU. This this was this was definitely a hit. The scene oh, yeah. where his followers sort of turn against him when they realize, oh, he's he's straying from the path of what he's preached to us that we've believed in him about building this society for the better of it. When they realize he is so set on rocket that he's willing to burn it all to the ground. That moment where one of them says, "Oh, for God's sake!" and he just snaps. Uh -huh. There is no God. That's why I stepped in. And he's trying to be oh, calm man. up until that point, and he just goes to 11 right there, and it's yeah. great. Fantastic performance. I need to check out more of the stuff this guy's been in. I haven't seen Peacemaker. I've been told that... The thing I've been told about Peacemaker is literally, Neil, if there's one show you're going to like, it's going to be Peacemaker. So I got to check it out eventually. Before, well, after we finish recording, just look up on YouTube Peacemaker theme song or like oh, opening. Oh, I've seen the intro. I've, yeah, I've been exposed. <laughs> it, it, okay, if you have, if you didn't immediately drop what you were doing and watch the show after that, I, I don't want to tell you. I didn't have enough for HBO Max. I tried okay, to. Fair. I live in the UK. It is impossible for me to watch HBO Max without a VPN. So, um, <laughs> I, I partook in a little bit of piracy. HBO is not getting any of my money after they cancelled Infinity Train. Fuck you. I Agreed. Uh, I thought of a really dumb joke when you said I engaged in piracy. I, I was gonna say, just call you Jack Sparrow. Uh, <laughs> I'm humorous, you see, Jack, because because your name is Jack. And Jack, Jack, move on. Please move on. Save me. <laughs> I'm saving it for future reference. It's alright. It was good. <laughs> I shall steal it and not give you credit. Like a pirate! Okay. <laughs> Way to tie it back together. Good job. I know, I know. Good job. Give a, give a gavel strike for that one. 
You didn't win anything, but you still got the game. My last two, again, mental notes for Guardians. Again, the last two things, I don't know how much more you've got to talk on. I covered most of my stuff. Nice. Okay. Being the soundtrack and the score, it's a Guardians film. Of course, it's great. What you expect. But, okay, that's one ticked off. The other one, uh, let me just, what, what, what was the previous film that came out again? Uh, what the was most the last recent one? Ant Man? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The CG in that. The CG in this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what changed between this. There's one or two things. There's there's one or two shots where it gets a little shaky. But for the most part, like, big step up from both Quantumania and I, I would say Love and Thunder as well. Yeah. All, all the flashback stuff with okay, Rocket and... The rest of the batch, those are all entirely CG characters, and they look fantastic. Framestore was the studio that made them. All the thumbs up. Beautiful. The environments, um, the practical effects for the sort of human-animal-evolved people on that planet looks brilliant. All the all the effects, the CGI, the animation in this. Brilliant. L- looked amazing. I would agree. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's my last point. My, my last two points are just praise the music, praise the I, effects. I guess if I had any more points to give, uh, we didn't talk about the Flesh Planet a ton. I don't know why. Yeah. Flesh pan- Planet grossed me out just a little. And it, it's not like a bad thing. It didn't hurt my enjoyment, but it was like, normally weird fleshy stuff doesn't bug me. I like Don't Hug Me. I like horror movies, but like, there was something going on with the hairs on that planet that got to me. <laughs> sure. I think, I think it's an interesting concept. It's not something you see often in sci-fi. It's, it's always, oh, yeah, you know, for building a satellite or something, oh, we'll, we'll launch this stuff there, mine the, like, resources nearby, or it's, like, modular and it fits together, or it's inflatable or whatever. And you're like, oh, no, it's organic. We, we grow this structure. Mm. Like, that's, that's a really interesting idea. It's definitely been done before, but I couldn't name anything off the top of my head. <laughs> I'll bring up a criticism my brother told me, which I kind of disagree with, but I'll explain why. Uh, He wanted the Ravengers to show up in the final fight because Sylvester Stallone's outfit, when he shows up, looks so fucking cool. He kind (laughs) of wanted to see it in action. But it goes back to what I said about Thor. Like, this movie is kind of stuffed. The idea of, like, throwing the Ravengers on nowhere during that scene. Like, I think it works better if we're focusing almost solely on Kraglin and uh, Cosmo on nowhere. I, I think that's the better path to take there. Um, anything else to say? Uh, I think maybe, maybe if you had, like, Wyndham, uh, the High Evolutionary, or like, maybe some of his lackeys or something were trying to escape, maybe you could have had them, like, come in to cut them off. But no, I don't, yeah. I don't think you needed to. It'd be cool to see them in. Again, if Zoe Saldana isn't coming back as Nebula and stuff. Uh, I'm forgetting on. Nebula more as names the wrong way around multiple times throughout this video. Um, <laughs> but if she's not coming back, it's not exactly the right premise. You could have Stallone and all these characters in What If. That, that, that could be, they can be an episode of that. Mm. I don't know. There's, there's things you can do. Even if this is the last time we see them in the films... We can still see them again. There's, there's fun things oh we can do. God, the what ifs for this movie. What if Adam what succeeded if... at the beginning and just got Rocket? <laughs> yeah. There's also, it is worth bearing in mind, there's a <laughs> Gamora is showing up in season two of What If, because there's that. Oh, that's, that's fair. Her Thanos Gamora outfit and Hulkbuster, Sakar, Tony episode that was cut from season one and then they just showed up in the finale out of nowhere. <laughs> Their episode is meant to be in season two. Yeah, so I guess at least one more Gamora appearance. And and she did say she kind of hopes the character continues with multiverse stuff. So the, yeah. the fact that the actress has given her blessing for that. Who knows? Gamora could show up again in some form. Who, who's to yeah. say? Um, I, I guess my last thought, and this was probably the last thing we'll discuss before going into the plugs and such, is... I kind of... Okay. High Evolutionary is really cool. 
He was really dope in this movie. Someone is playing music outside and I want to kill them. <laughs> but, uh, the problem with this, for me, I'm going to turn my audio down so it doesn't pick up as much. For me is, he didn't have a big fight at the end. Like, I remember that scene where he, like, blows up all his people, and I was like, oh, shit, how are they going to beat him? They just they just kind of hit him a lot. <laughs> and, again, that one's more of a nitpick, but, you know, he's such a badass bad guy, and we see him fuck around with the gravity so much. I would have mm. liked it if it, it took him at least a little longer to fight him. Sure. No, I agree with that. Maybe I don't think it, I don't feel that the film is missing that, but that, that's that's another one of those things that oh wouldn't that have been good to see? I mean may, maybe you cut something earlier, like maybe maybe you cut uh, I don't know maybe maybe you cut the the scene where they fight the pig and give a little bit more time to fighting him. But sure. overall, like, that is a bit nitpicky, and I'll acknowledge that. He was such a good villain, and this story really was good. I can't overstate that. I'm just critical because this is the last one. That's, sure. that's kind of how I view it. Like, we're not seeing Dave Bautista has Drax again. He's gone. We're, we're not seeing a good chunk of these characters again. And even if I feel unsatisfied with some of that, I still am satisfied as a whole that at least they got one more good movie before going out. Mm. And that's my final thoughts on Guardians 3. You got, you got anything else to check out into the no. world? No, I just thought um, that Guardians 3 is sort of this, it's kind of unique in that, in terms of an ending for Marvel characters. Mm. Because thinking about the other like ongoing Marvel series, okay, I mean, Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3... Iron Man's ending was in an Avengers film. Okay, Captain America, his ending was in an Avengers film. Black Widow was in an Avengers film. Thor is still doing his own thing. He's, he's, he's still going. We don't know when the last Thor film is going to be, if there will be one. Spider-Man, okay, as we said, No Way Home was sort of a new beginning. Mm. This, is, this is unique. Do Do Doctor Strange 3, until we hear more about it, as far as we know, isn't going to be the last Doctor Strange film. It, it, it'll That's probably keep popping up in Avengers stuff. That's true. That's, that's an yeah. interesting point. I didn't even think so of I think, that. So this is kind of the first. In, it, it's phase five, and this is sort of the first film to end mm -hmm. you know, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, uh, Captain America. I, I, I titled, like, team character-based film. It, uh, it's an ending out with the Avengers mm -hmm. titled series. You, you are, so I, I we don't really have it. anything to compare it to yet. I, I think has an ending to the Guardians franchise. It's pretty damn good. I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's really good. Hmm. I do like that they saved the animals at the end, too. That that was a yeah. really good moment for Rocket, where he's like, Quill, we gotta save everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's when he goes back and opens the cage, and it's him deciding he decides to do that a good bit in advance of saying that to peter mm -hmm. before the sh short fight with the high evolutionary and everything but he takes the time he walks through it you see all the other animals and when he, he finds out raccoon yeah yeah it, it's a great moment and then but there the little raccoons are playing beside him as he's listening to the song at the end and, yeah it, it still makes me smile to just think about him saying the name's Rocket Raccoon. Just, I don't know why that brings me so much joy, but it mm. really does. Mm. And with that, let's go straight into plugs. Jack, you're first. <laughs> Hello, for now, they're on the internet. I am Jack of All Trades. Uh, you'll find me on Jack of All Trades on YouTube. Uh, at the moment, the video is currently rendering, going up tomorrow slash today, depending on when this goes live and time zones and who, who knows. Uh, my reaction to the first episode of Maiden Abyss Season 2 is coming out. Uh, I said last week, in last week's video, we run out of the premise of the show. Um, and, oh, it's, it's a fascinating idea and everything. But just with this first episode of Season 2, it's already thrown such a big spanner into the works. We're all 
the first season of the show is these characters, okay, there's this pit, this massive hole full of all these different biomes and everything that just goes down. It's in the middle of the ocean. It's isolated from the rest of the world. Oh, the main character's mom is down there. We're going to go find her. And it's that crazy and grueling adventure to get down and find her. And they've got a considerable bit, a considerable bit, bit, uh, considerable bit of the way down. <laughs> it's getting late. And now at the start of season two, they've gone, okay, we're going to intercut their story with this flashback to some previous explorers who came down here years and years and years and years ago. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, these are the people who first discovered it. Okay, cool. The trailer set it up that way. These are the people who discovered this whole this abyss. And just in the first episode, and this isn't major spoilers, they're not. They, they find this boat that's washed up on shore with a compass and people who have survived coming back from the abyss. People have already been. So, oh, okay. So we're, we're not following like this group who discovered it. We're following just another random group of people. Mm-hmm. And when they get to the islands, when they get to the abyss, there are natives living there who aren't living there in the present. Oh, that's kind of sick. There's, 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 it's just... You, you think, you know, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get a bit of a prequel thing. It is not the prequel thing implied at any point. It is so different from what I expected going in. I was gutted when the credits started rolling that this episode is only 20 minutes long. <laughs> but whole season's out, so over the next 12 weeks, we're going to be covering Maiden of S season two. And yeah, that, that's what I've got going on. Oh, by the way, just you mentioned time of episodes, and we have critiqued this in previous Disney Plus series, so it reminded me. They announced the other day that each episode of Secret Invasion, it is apparently an hour. So nice. Six hours of a whole Nick Fury show. That's going to be dope. Uh, hey. Hey, everybody. Knock, it's... knock on wood. All right, here, I'll get the gavel. All right. There we go. I had some wood. Hey, hey guys. What's up? Hey there. You come here often? You should. It's a decent channel. It's not bad. Anyways, hi, I'm Neil. Uh, I do streams and I play video games. Um, I have this channel, which you are currently watching. It would be nice if you subscribed to it. Um, but if, if you don't, you don't have to. Uh, okay. Uh, and, you know, there are plenty of videos on here for funsy stuff. And there's more coming up. We're, we're finishing Sally Face in the next couple of days. And then, no idea what we're doing next. There have been discussions of God of War Ragnarok. There have been destru- dis- destructions. There have been destructions of Kingdom Hearts. I'm finally going to destroy that franchise. Uh, I love Kingdom Hearts. Um, there, there have been discussions. Maybe you should comment and tell me what you'd like to see me play, and maybe I shall do that. Um, but with that, yeah, that's the end of this video for me. You got anything to add, Jack? All right, let's end it how we started. Ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga, ooga chaka.